L'histoire d'Alpine est aussi l'histoire d'un homme, Jean Redélé. Redélé a l'esprit d'un homme d'affaires, mais au fond de son cœur, c'est un coureur automobile. Dans les années 50, il participe à de nombreux rallyes dans les Alpes françaises, au volant de sa Renault 4 chevaux. En 1955, il crée sa propre entreprise automobile, dont le nom et l'esprit évoquent ses expériences de conduite dans les Alpes. Ses voitures Alpine possèdent un ADN de légèreté, d'agilité et de pur plaisir de conduite. Il démarre la production dans sa ville natale de Dieppe et lance au début des années 1960 son modèle le plus emblématique, la 110, qui rencontre un succès immédiat. Mais c'est la course automobile qui fait émerger Alpine, en particulier le rallye. Le Suédois Ove Andersson remporte le rallye de Monte Carlo 1971 avec une berlinette à 110. Puis, Alpine gagne le tout premier championnat du monde des rallyes en 1973. En parallèle, Redele s'attelle à créer de nouveaux véhicules de série, comme l'A310, qui rencontre un grand succès commercial et sportif. On entend souvent jouer la Marseillaise, car Alpine remporte de nombreux titres en sport automobile, dans diverses disciplines, avec comme point culminant la victoire aux 24 heures du Mans 1978 avec l'A442B. 40 ans plus tard, l'A110 s'est relancée avec succès, dans le respect de son ADN originel. Elle reçoit de nombreuses distinctions dans toute l'Europe. Au Mans, la légende alpine reste bien vivante, avec de multiples succès en catégorie LMP2. Dès ses débuts, Jean Redélé s'est associé avec bonheur avec le groupe Renault. Et aujourd'hui, en 2021, c'est Renault qui fait entrer Alpine en Formule 1, grâce à ses vastes compétences techniques à Viry-Châtillon en France et à Enstone en Angleterre. Avec ses incroyables ateliers mécaniques, l'équipe Alpine F1 dispose d'emblée d'une expertise et d'un succès à exploiter. Sous la marque Renault, l'équipe a remporté deux championnats des constructeurs et pilotes de Formule 1. Et en tant que motoriste, elle compte 12 titres constructeurs et 11 titres pilotes. Pour Alpine, c'est une nouvelle étape d'un voyage marqué par la passion pour la course et par les frissons de la performance pure. Un voyage motivé par l'envie de gagner et de le faire avec brio. I am proud to now be part of the next chapter in the Alpine story. For me, 2020 was an intense season, but there were some great highs, including my first podium. Now I am back in the rhythm of F1 and I'm very hungry to build on the success of 2020. Of course, a French brand is exciting for me personally, but even more, this shows that for Group Renault, Alpine is now core of the motorsport strategy. We have the strong support of a mature technical team behind the scenes and a lot of ambition, pushing hard to every checkered flag. I'm grateful for the support of the team. I know I'm never alone behind the wheel of an Alpine Formula One car. We're going to be looking for good results and to build on last year's good performance. But most importantly, we need to use 2021 to position ourselves correctly for 2022, which is the big opportunity for us. I'm very confident. Now, just before we see the car for the first time, we should mention again the winner of these incredible trophies, our two-time world champion, Fernando Alonso. I know after Fernando's recent time off F1, he's incredibly excited to be, in his words, home again. Fernando, we'll see you very soon. And now is the moment that we have all waited for, the beginning of Alpine's new era in Formula One.
Wow, the Alpine A521. It looks amazing and it's so exciting to have the Alpine name on a Formula One car. Esteban, what do you think? Wow, it looks great. It makes me proud to be a Frenchman. I can't wait to get behind the wheel. And what excites you about the Alpine F1 team? Well, I'm very proud to be part of Alpine F1 team. Uh, it's, a, it's a team with French and British hearts, uh, French passion and British grit, which is a, a perfect match. Um, for me, who's French, but I've also been involved with British racing teams for the majority of my career, it's a perfect fit. I'm hugely excited by, by the project. Um, Renault F1 team made great progress last year, and now as Alpine F1 team, we are even more ambitious. Um, again, really excited by its ambitions, very clear commercial strategy uh, that needs us to be visible. And the best way to do it is uh, to race at the front. So we, we now have a, a mature technical team, good and proven facilities and a correlation between factory and track that is working very well. Um, everyone is, is hugely motivated to deliver, um, obviously in their respective areas. So you sound confident, but how do you feel the team is looking for 2021? Well, I've exchanged it with, uh, with the technical team. So I had my engineers on the phone uh, throughout winter and, and the mechanics and, and what I see is, is very encouraging. Um, I think we're in good shape. The car is an evolution of 2020, which is positive for us. Um, the team is expected to get into Q3. Uh, we had good rhythm, plus I got that podium feeling, um, which I loved, obviously. And uh, yeah, I'm very keen to, to get that back. Um, on the other side, we had great results uh, also. Um, but what we want is to get them on a regular basis now. Um, we want to aim for even more uh, form across all types of tracks. Um, and we are you know, going back to, to tracks that we know now for, for the most part, and uh, also into a rhythm that we know um, on, a, on a very intense season. Uh, which we know we can, we can do uh, based on 2020. So, yeah, now I can't wait to, to get going. All right. Well, you can probably feel the excitement from here. As Esteban said earlier, the drivers know they're not alone behind the wheel of this Alpine A521. And I'm now delighted to introduce you to three key people from Alpine F1 team. Alpine F1 Team Racing Director, Davide Brivio. Alpine F1 Team Executive Director, Marchan Budkowski. And Alpine CEO, Laurent Rossi. Davide, in your role as Racing Director, I guess it's your job to try and extract the best from the drivers. Yes, <laughs> just uh... As a technical director, ensure the maximum possible performance is extracted from the chassis in the engine. I will ensure that the drivers are performing at their best. So this means getting to know them extremely well, what they need to perform, what kind of support network, and then liaising with technical team to action or create the optimal level. It's a, it's a very much a team sport. Uh, I'm very lucky to have uh, two very excellent drivers. Fernando Alonso is one of the most determined sport people I have encountered. And he's an experienced race and championship winner, so he knows what it takes to pull a team together. He also knows the team very well, some faces from the past, but also he has spent time getting to know the newer recruits, so he will be very focused on what it takes to succeed. And Ensteban is young, but just as hungry, and is very quick as seen by his podium in Bahrain and how close he was to Daniel by the end of the season. And now the age is, is rounding off. He's more focused on detail, but target feedback and less critical of himself. So looking forward to enhancing his strong points and continuing his already strong progress. The dynamic between Fernando and Esteban is going to be an interesting one. Uh, they can definitely be benefit from each other. Uh, Esteban in learning from his experience and Fernando from Esteban inside to the current team. Also keep a keen eye on the young driver program to monitor the next generation. 
Uh, young drivers are an important part of the team, not just as a future of Alpine drivers. They play a huge role on testing, development, sim work, race support. So it's a very interesting position and happy, happy to start work. I can't wait to be in Bahrain. And of course, you're crossing over from bikes to single-seaters. Will that bring a different dimension to your role? Yeah, sport people are a unique breed. Determined, focused, driven, hungry, almost ruthless. But bikes and Formula One are both a team sport, so we need the athletes to look behind their personal ambition and deliver for the world, not just for their own individual aims. Last year in the MotoGP, we did just that. We worked as a team and won the championship. It was entirely a team effort and conducted in a very challenging competitive condition. So Formula One in this respect is similar. You need to work together, get the most from each part of the world to succeed. However, you can get away from the fact that sports have a very different technologies. The methodologies and the way you work are different. And I look forward to discover all the Formula One specificities. And it will be an accelerated learning, but the team in Enston and Viri are highly experienced and motivated. So there is an advantage for me there. We know what we have to do as a team, and now it will be getting the best out of each other. So our goals are totally clear, which makes the roadmap to achieve them also very clear. Now, Martin, tell us about the genesis of this car, especially in the very peculiar conditions that we had in the past year. Well, yes, it's been a, it's been a challenging year. I think it's been a challenging year for everyone around the world and F1 teams are, are no exception. So we had to adapt, we had to innovate, but that's what we do best. You know, F1 teams are very agile organizations and, and they can react very well to these kind of situations. So we had to adapt to you know, the working from home situation where it's more difficult uh, to do collaborative work. We had to adapt to the social distancing measures, which make running a factory much more complicated. Uh, we had to innovate, like the last few weeks, for example, to assemble the car uh, you're seeing today. We had to set up a biosphere so the race team uh, could put it together in safe uh, conditions. And from a personal point of view, managing uh, a team in these conditions have been you know, a tremendous experience as well. Uh, but here it is, the car is there, and that's the result of the work of our staff. And they've, they've, been, they've put an amount of determination, of motivation, in this car and I think they can be proud of the result and I'm certainly proud of the way our team members have reacted and I'm also humbled to be standing here today although virtually uh, to uh, represent the 1200 people from Viri and Enstone who have been contributed to it. And what are the main differences compared to 2020 and the main challenges for this season ahead? So this year's car is, is an evolution of last year's contender mainly uh, because the regulations have forced us to carry over the same basis. However, we've worked and tried to improve every area that was left free to develop. And Pirelli has introduced new tyres for this season. They're different from, from last year's. But also the FIA, to spice things up a little bit, has made changes to the dynamic uh, regulations that lost quite a lot of performance to the cars. And we've worked hard during the winter to try to recover this performance. Interestingly, they're actually in an area that normally doesn't really behave in the same way at the track than our tools and our simulations tell us. So it's going to be a year where, beyond getting the new tyres to work with the car, it's going to be very important to get the best collaboration between the people at the factory and people at the track to develop the car dynamically and to allow us to realise our ambitious development programme for the first few races. And that includes the driver, who are an essential part of this development loop. So these are challenges for, for the 2021 uh, season. And certainly we are aiming at building up on the positive momentum we had in the second part of the 2020 season. Laurent, the first Alpine Formula One car is being revealed today. As the Alpine CEO, tell us about the A521. Uh, firstly, it's an exciting moment, a new journey for Alpine as well as for me. 
Uh, the A521 is based on the fundamentals of the RS20 chassis, and in particular on the strength that enabled us to finish on the podium three times last season and score 181 points in the championship. Uh, the team has made a number of changes to the chassis to comply with technical regulation and maintain its competitiveness. Uh, on the engine side, the one-year delay in the new regulation means that we will be using an evolution of our RE20A unit. There are a few developments with the powertrain and we have worked specifically to ensure optimum performance and reliability. In fact, this car embodies the Alpine identity and its livery conveys our values. The blue, white and red is obviously a reference to both the French flag and the Union Jack, representing the soul and character of this multicultural team that merges flamboyance and skills under one banner. In fact, this car is the expression and symbol of Enstone and Viri, one team united. Motorsport and F1 in particular is at the heart of our strategy to develop the Alpine brand. This car is also an asset to showcase the excellence of the Renault Group. And it's an exciting day, an emotional day. How do you feel today? Well, I'm feeling very proud standing by this technological gem. Uh, after only a month in joining, I've already witnessed the commitment and expertise the team has put into this car. Uh, because this car is essentially an evolution of last year's, we are now at a crossroads. Um, while we are confident we give it our best, soon we'll need to focus on the next challenges. Uh, the new 2022-2025 year is already around the corner, calling for a completely revised chassis and a new engine. Uh, we're, we're positioning ourselves to continue being on podiums and become a real contender, competing for victories, aiming for constructors and driver world championships. With that in mind, this A521 truly symbolizes a new dynamic, a new chapter in the history of Alpine and the Renault Group. I can't wait for the season to start so that we can watch our car competing in the capable hands of Fernando and Esteban. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Now, our time here is almost up, but to truly appreciate the passion and purpose behind this team, there's one more person and a few more people to meet. Our next guest is a man who was instrumental to bringing Alpine to the Formula One circuit. It's my great pleasure to welcome Group Renault CEO, Luca De Meo. Hello everyone, this is a pleasure and a honor to launch this 2021 season, the first under our new colors. The livery you're seeing today has the simplicity and strength of a flag. French and English, engine and chassis. It contains all the strength of the team. Behind the wheel of this gorgeous A521, we have a new driver lineup that I would like to say a few words about. First, Fernando Alonso. He has come home 20 years after he made his debut with us. He is back with honors as a two-time world champion and an international star. He brings us his speed, his tenaciousness, his will, his talent, his experience and his commitment. It is a great pride to have this fantastic driver, but it's also a big responsibility. Esteban Ocon is a star in the making. He has given us our best results with his second place in Bahrain. He brings his talent in full ascent, as well as his fighting spirit and cool head, his humility and consistency. We can expect some beautiful, podium finishes from him. This is a magnificent duo. They embody the values of the Groupe Renault and the authenticity of Alpine. They have earned their place among the elite of motorsports uh, out of their sheer talent. A Formula One team is also all the personnel behind the drivers and the cars. With the management team, I have every confidence in to lead us to success. This collective spirit is what is most important to me. 
that what make us success in the long run, working together while each person has his or her own expertise and talents put to the best use in the position that suits him or her. The 1,200 men and women at Enston and Viry Châtillon give the best of themselves every single day. It is also to them that we owe the progress of the last few years. I know that they will accomplish more and I want to show them all of my support today. We are in Formula One for the long run and we are here to win. We will put all required means to be at best competitive level. Alpine inspires us and pushes this dynamic to the top. Sportiness, elegance, avant-garde. It stands for the rage to win with new challenges to overcome with each race. We lead the same fight in the group to turn the company around. It's a challenge in which we engage every day. We know that 2021 will be difficult. We will fight to make it a success, but it's a collective effort. The Alpine team contributes to it by giving us pride and a sense of belonging. Every podium we'll climb onto will prove that anything is possible. I really can't wait to be with everyone in Bahrain for the first GP. Allez les bleus!